Well, hi guys and welcome back. We've done a little uh, more in the um, wormery and I want to show you some stuff. So this is the official name of my harvester. We named it Harvey for harvester. <laughs> I know, I thought it was cute. So these bins down here, these are new. And the reason I got them is because when this thing shakes, hopefully a lot of the castings will go here because when I had the other one, it was shorter and there was a lot of this. So the castings would go there, but um, hopefully these will work out. And there's two of them. And they overlap like this, which I like because hopefully it'll prevent more from just going on the table. I mean, it's never gonna be 100%, but you know, if I could catch most of it, I really would like to, <laughs> just less mess. So Joe hung up my little bug zapper up here because you know, this is a wormery. Occasionally we do have little flying things in here, um, even though I control them with mosquito dunks. But just in case, I rarely hear, hear it but every once in a blue moon, I hear bzz, a little thing, so I know it's working. I got my new sign up there. Um, I found that one on Etsy. I thought it was cute. And then I hung this curtain here to keep the other room separated, which is another part of the wormery. So I finally have like all the bins on the racks here. And today I'm going to actually spend the day down here working. It's my day off from my uh, outside job. So there's nothing better than I like to do is um, to spend the day with my worms, you know, checking on them, feeding them, making sure everything's okay. We put all the stuff that we have up here. Remember in the last video, we put it in these black bins and we're starting to label with just sticky, sticky notes for now, what is actually in each one. Because I have these stickers that are the ones that you write on with chalk from the dollar store and I'm gonna try to put those but I'm not sure how well they're gonna work so for now we just put sticky labels just to show like what we have in here and you know it just if you look at the whole thing it just makes it look really attractive nice and clean and then up here like I'm filming with my new camera here so I'm not even sure how this is gonna look oh I heard the zap I'm sure it's going to look great, but I'm just not used to it. This is like my microscope up here. And I still have all this space for storage. Um, I, <laughs> when I buy these bins and I get one that's broken, I put a little X on them so I know. And then that's my burlap and my bubble wrap. So what do you think, guys? And this is the table I basically work on. This is my... Um, my amazing watering machine. I love this thing with everything in me. It has made my life a lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do. Today I'm going to feed the worms. I'm going to feed everybody. And I'm going to check on the nursery bins. Because I think some of them have to be harvested. And uh, reset. So let me show you the supplies. We put all the supplies that I use basically here. Um, these buckets, I told you I get those at Menards. I love them. They're like the perfect size for harvesting or separating worms. Um, I, of course, I got a can of pumpkin here getting ready for the fall. <laughs> and then these containers, we got them. They're the perfect size. And Joe put these bungee cords on them because they have little wheels. And when I go to use something, I don't want it rolling out and just falling everywhere. And these are a little bigger. And the bungee cords, they really work well. Plus, they're not super tight to where it restricts me. See? It'll just prevent it from rolling everywhere. And I have the other bins down here with uh, my other supplies. So, I think it looks nice and neat. You know, I need these things in here. Why have them, like, scattered everywhere? And um, this was the ultimate goal, you know? So, I hope you're liking the wormery. The wormery has officially turned from a hobby to a business now. I think I've been in business now almost a year. And honestly, I'm breaking even right now. Um, it really takes a business two to four years to get up and going and on its feet. And it takes a lot of hard work. But now is the time when you dedicate like everything you have in you. 
um, but don't get burned out obviously but you know I really enjoy this and uh, I'm gonna continue to do this and I've been doing it 20 years now and nothing's gonna stop me now isn't that a song <laughs> So these, oh, this is another trick I wanted to show you. You see this? Sometimes when I know I'm going to put worms in bins, but I'm not doing it today, I get the bins ready with the bedding, but I don't wet it. Um, and it just makes it easier because then the day that I'm going to put the worms in there, I just have to wet everything down, put the worms in, and ready to go. And I assemble bins like that way a lot faster and what how you know it doesn't really take me long to assemble assemble a few with bedding in it and just leave it there so that's just a little time saver so right now let's go look at the nursery and uh i'll talk to you more in there all right i still haven't written anything in my chalkboard so we still have the nurseries here i still have to clean these bins and there's one that's broken we put my castings over there in the corner and Joe hung up the shop vac, which I still haven't used, <laughs> on this wall. I think it's the perfect size. See, it's not a big one, and it's not heavy, because it just makes it easier to maneuver, maneuver around. Manure, listen to me. Oh, my gosh. I'm still setting this thing up, the thing for my sprouts. And today I'm going to show you the... Um, the bin with everything living in it. So I have African nightcrawlers, euros, red wigglers, and swamp worms in there all together, and there are no blues in there. And the reason I'm doing this is because I like them all, but I wanna see if I'm gonna have one species that's gonna dominate everything. So we're gonna check on that. And obviously this European nightcrawler bin needs to be harvested. I've got adults in here now that need to move into the bins. And then this one down here, we reset the other day. And it's got some worms starting to hatch. And I can tell because I see some of the food disappearing. So we're gonna do that. So let me get a pair of gloves and let's check out the Everybody Lives in bin, which is down here. And now that I have a new camera, I need to get a new tripod because my other one doesn't fit. So bear with me, guys. All right, this is the everybody lives in. I haven't checked it in like a week and a half, so I don't really know what I'm gonna find in here. So let's do it together. Oh, wow. Obviously their, yeah, their bedding needs to be changed. Oh man, look. This is the, the wheatgrass. But there's nothing left of it. <laughs> they've, uh, yeah, they've definitely eaten this. But it's still, there's still roots, so I'm still going to leave it in here. And it looks like they're still munching down. Look how nice this camera looks, guys. Oh, this is definitely an African nightcrawler right here. I love the way the background gets blurry and lets you focus on the worm. That is gorgeous. Oh, sorry, little guy. He's so pretty. It's funny because when I look at him with my eyes, he's a lot darker than he shows up here on the camera. This is a mango that I put here a while ago, and it looks like they're taking their time eating it. I don't know why. You see, this is the mystery about worms. You just honestly never know what they're gonna do. One day they do one thing, and then another day they do another thing. And it's all very unpredictable. But as you can see, we have a lot of youngsters here. A lot of youngsters here. What in the world is that thing? Oh, it's a worm. They're doing very well. Wow, that is a beautiful picture right there. I hope it captures it. So, I don't know what to do with this bin. I think I wanna harvest it, see what I have left, and maybe either sell it or do a giveaway. 
What do you think? You think you guys would want some of these? Like everybody combined in here? Maybe we could do a giveaway. But obviously there's African night crawlers here, so it would have to be before the end of summer. Yeah, there's a lot of them in here. They're doing very well. You know, sometimes worms will die on you and it's nothing that's your fault. It just happens. Sometimes it just happens. You know, I've had it happen to me in the past. And remember, I've been doing this 20 years. I have had many, many ups and downs, but there's no reason to be discouraged and give up, okay? Always reach out to me with questions. Um, you can email me, my number's on the website, you can text me. Sometimes people have called me and if I'm either on the way to work or coming home, I talk to them because I can talk through my car. Um, always reach out. And, you know, if you have a problem, we'll try to find the answer together or figure it out. So, yeah, this bedding definitely is... It needs to go. I mean, they can still process this more, obviously. It's not castings. But I'm afraid if I do that, they're just going to start diminishing and dying because they're not going to have enough nutrients. See, that's an African nightcrawler right there. You can tell. They're so funny. So did I tell you? Well, I haven't told you. I'm bringing African nightcrawlers back this winter into my wormery. <laughs> And I'm going to have African night crawlers up for sale. But I have a plan. I'm going to put them in the giant spare nursery I have. I'm going to insulate them well. And I have a space heater. Which is going to work well down here. So I'll be able to use that. And you know the space heater is not going to be on all the time. I do have heat in here. This is in a controlled environment inside my house. But last year we had an ice storm. And I just couldn't get the temperature high enough down here. And that's what happened. But this year, coming up, I got a plan. So if something like that happens, I'll definitely have the space heater going. You see the luminescence a little bit? You can tell. Those are the African night crawlers. So that's what's going on today. So if I had a tripod, I would put you up on it and take you with me. But I'll take you with me anyway, but it'll have to be in spurts because I only have the one hand. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, that's an African nightcrawler for you right there. These guys make excellent fishing worms. The only thing is if you put them in cold water, they're going to die. A lot of these guys do well in the south. They are also amazing composting worms. They, if you're the type of person that has a lot of boxes, newspaper, junk mail, leaves, like carbon things, they devour carbon like I have never seen. They are definitely the worm for that. And you can raise them in bins that are like a rubber made tote. You can raise them in, in those towers like I have. I've raised African night crawlers in towers. I've raised every type of worm in towers and they do fine. They do fine. Now, sometimes they reduce in size because they self-regulate their population, but that doesn't mean that they're not in there eating. Just the next generation will come and eat. And, you know, as the tower goes up, you keep putting more floors and and they just keep doing. Their casting also is very nice. It's very dark. Um, so, yeah, they'll do well. They'll do well for you. Just don't keep these guys outside if you live in a cold climate, guys. If you live in the warm, like south, you can keep them outside. Just make sure they have shade because even with the ability to withstand the heat, they still can't be in direct sun because they will literally melt. And it is a sad sight indeed. Years ago, I ordered worms from I don't even know where. And it was in the middle of summer. 
and it was really, really hot. And the worms arrived, literally melted in the box. The smell was horrible. But, you know, it happens. It happens. The company replaced them. They were so nice. So they're definitely liking this wheatgrass stuff. how cute I am. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep you updated. Hey guys, so these bins, I had them ready to go with the bedding and all I did was wet them down and I took some red wigglers from the nursery bin and put them in here. So I just divided my bundle by three and I put them in here and now they're going to go up here on the wreck. So what I did was I put the worms on the surface and I gave them a chance to go down. So now that they've gone down, I'm gonna cover this with either burlap or wet newspaper. I'm probably gonna use newspaper because I got so much of it. And then they're gonna get a piece of bubble wrap and a date, and then they're gonna go on, on the wreck. And then I'm just gonna keep working down the line. Um, yeah so we're doing that today all right so what i'm doing right now is this is my red wiggler nursery i've taken half of it harvested some and moved it over here see my red wigglers so what i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is continue harvesting and but i'm gonna take uh, a couple of rounds and do it with you guys look at all the springtails i have now with this better camera you'll probably be able to see them better let me back up a little see them those are little springtails. Those have come because as a worm mama, I have spoiled my worms a little bit. <laughs> I gave them, <laughs> I've been giving them fruit and a lot of wet things and they've loved it and eaten it, but this is the result. So I'm, I'm starting to harvest this a little. I gotta let it dry out some and I'm gonna add fresh bedding on this side so that I could put all my cocoons here and they can start growing and hatching. But I'm gonna need to add some dry peat moss and some diatomaceous earth and it'll take care of these little guys. And there, there's nothing wrong with them. I just don't like to see them in abundance like this. And they are part of the composting world, you know, but I just don't like to see that many. It's like, they gotta go. So basically I just take handfuls and put it in my Menard bucket. I mean, look at that. This is obviously not done. So what I do with this bedding, once I get all the worms out and cocoons and everything, I put it back in here. And there's a lot less once I put it back in here. See these paper pieces? I also still find a lot of avocado shells because they take the longest to break down. But every once in a while, if you put an avocado on the surface and bury it about halfway and just leave it alone for a while, one day you're gonna come and you're gonna lift this up and there's gonna be a million worms under it. It's almost like they like to hollow it out before they eat the outside, they go for the inside first. Cause you know, that's the mushy part. All right, so let's go see Harvey and we're gonna take care of this. And again, when I edit this video, I'll do my best to lower the sound on Harvey over here. So this is definitely, see the worms remain here and the big chunks, 
the cocoons and little baby worms go here and down here is the castings and it's doing a pretty good job so joe said that i think we're gonna improvise this why is this going in and out of focus i have no idea this stick here we're gonna end up moving it we're gonna take this and move it over here so that I have more space here. And he's gonna put a light over here for me, shining down. Cause I think it'll just be better. So, because as you can see, this gets in the way of pouring these trays in here. So this is gonna be moved to here. We're gonna have a light. And that way I'll have more room and look at the castings. And there's a lot of cocoons in here, so I'm going to have to sift those out. But you see all the little springtails in here? Once I add diatomaceous earth to this and I fluff it up and I let it dry out, they're, they disappear. They're gone. They'll be gone. Uh, so what do you think, guys? Messy, isn't it? <laughs> no one said worm farming is a clean career. So we put this little stool here for me because, you know, I'm only five foot three. <laughs> I'm short. <laughs> All right. So let me keep trucking along and uh, I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, guys. So I did half the uh, nursery. Well, more than half. And the worms are in here, the adult ones. So now what I'm going to do is remember the little trick with the mesh that I taught you? I'm going to take worms, just handfuls. Put them in here and put them in here so the goal is the worms are going to go through the hole into the castings and leave the big chunks behind and then when they do that we're going to take this and we're going to harvest it again through harvey the machine and you watch how clean it's going to come out so and it seems like double the work i know it does but it really saves a lot of time at the end. So when I put the worms here and I start taking the big chunky stuff off the surface, the minute they see the light, they go down. I just go do things in between. So I'm not just standing here wasting time. And before you know it, like I'm done. So I'm gonna do, see this one? We're gonna put it here. See, look, that's a, a big uh, avocado thing. So, Let's spread it out. Now, this is just for demonstration purposes. We are going to build a big one of these and maybe put it on a table by itself. Because for my purposes, I need something bigger. But for you at home, you can use any kind of little sifter you got. I mean, this was given to me years ago with... Um, a body spray and some body creams for Christmas. So I saved the basket because, you know, us worm farmers, anything that has a mesh or a hole, the first thing you think is, oh my gosh, will that be good for the worms? I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> so this is what I do. I leave them there. And as I go, I take some off and I keep doing that to the surface. And before you know it, the worms are going to be down into the castings and then it'll be time to harvest again. Okay, so here we go. I finished scraping everything from the top. The worms kept diving down. So now this is all worms and castings. So we're gonna put it through Harvey the sifter again. All right, I'm gonna turn on Harvey again and we're gonna harvest these worms. second sifted these are the worms that are left I mean they're not perfectly clean but they're never going to be perfectly clean to me this is clean 
And these are uh, red wigglers. There are no blues in here. So what do you think of that trick, guys? I mean, it sure makes life a lot easier, I'll tell you that. A lot easier. So now I'm gonna take these. I can either sell them or I'm gonna divide them into my grow out bins and let them get nice and fat, which, you know, for a red wiggler, they're a pretty good size. Red wigglers are the tiny guys. And then in the fall, we're putting them up for sale. Oh, so now let me show you what I've done with the nurseries. So what do you think, guys? This is what's left. Pure red wigglers. There are no blues in here. And isn't that a cool trick? See how nice and clean they came out? I mean, for me, this is clean. They're never gonna be 100% clean. Plus, you know, you always want a little bit of their bedding in with them because of the microbes. So now with that, I can either divide it and put it in my grow out bins to get nice and plump for the fall sale. I can sell them like this, which, you know, for a red wiggler, they're, they're a normal size. Um, or I can pop it back in the nursery. I have choices. So let me go show you. The okay, nursery. so here we are at the nursery. This is the half that I did not harvest. So all the cocoons and baby worms from over there, I put them back in here. This is oyster shell. I know it's in chunks, but as it gets wet, it'll dissolve. And then on this side, I added the straw, more oyster shell. I added the pine shavings, which honestly is my favorite product to use. And I'm going to mix this all up, wet this down, and then move them over here so they can start growing and reproducing. And then the cycle continues. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me that thumbs up, subscribe, share my channel. Don't skip the commercials. <laughs> I know I always say that, but I never hear anyone else say it, and it's the truth. Don't skip our commercials. Come on. I don't skip yours. <laughs> so, guys, I'll see you all next time. Take care.